today the topic we are covering is the basics of pipe coding for the product managers the goal is to bring your ideas to life with the interactive prototypes i'm going to show you how to go from problem statement to a live ai powered pm tool in minutes without touching any complex code this skill can help you validate the ideas faster influence the decisions earlier and stand out in the interviews so what is wipe coding it is building software alongside ai in the real time think of it as having a junior developer who works at the speed of your thought it's not just about writing prompts it's about breaking down your idea into small clear instructions and iterating quickly you are the architect and ai is the builder but before we dive in let's debunk four big myths that hold most pms back myth number 1 ai builds the whole app for you however in reality you guide the architecture define the features and review the output you are still the product leader for what ai is going to build myth number 2 no planning is needed just start typing in reality a few minutes of planning your features up front will save you hours of fixing things later good prompts come from clear requirements which is already our job as pms then myth number 3 this is only for the engineers if you can write a clear user story or a prd you have the skills needed to write a great prompt and finally myth number 4 it is only for toy or side projects absolutely not i have seen pms build powerful internal tools that solve the real pain points and save the time of their teams every single week as an example in one of my past pm roles i remember spending an entire afternoon drafting the hypothesis for the new onboarding flow i had to go through user feedback past experiments and team notes it took hours to get a first draft if i would had had this skill back then i could have generated a first draft in minutes freeing up my time to focus on validation and refinement instead of starting from a blank page the key insight this is not about replacing the developers it's about not waiting for them when you need to test an idea quickly so why this matters for your career it helps in faster idea validation and show it as a proof of concept for the stakeholders inside a company you become the pm who unblocks decisions while others debate you prototype and who get things moving in interviews you can show actual working examples of your ideas not just talk about the case studies it's proof you can take initiative and deliver results without waiting on the resources and for your growth you validate the ideas 10 times faster which means more learning cycles and the better instincts the more successful pms i know treat this like any other core skill data analysis user research stakeholder management it's not optional anymore ultimately being able to prototype ideas yourself changes the conversation from should we do this to here is what it looks like do we ship it it's a massive advantage there are many tools which helps in doing the wipe coding but for pms i re- recommend starting one of this for fast full stack tools with a back end and database bold.new and lovable is perfect and we are going to use lovable today for quick data analysis and prototypes right in the chat window cloud artifacts is fantastic and for building conversational bots or research assistants gpt builder is incredibly easy today we are using lovable because it handles all the technical setup for us now how are we going to approach it systematically this is not just random vibing instead we use a proven five step framework calling it as the ifptr method the first step is idea define the user and problem in one clear sentence then features 
break it down into a three to four micro features maximum. Then comes the prompts. Write a specific prompt for each feature, not the whole app at once. Next, test. Check each piece as it is built before combining. And the last one is refining. Iterate based on what works and what breaks. So instead of a prompt like build me a competitor analysis tool, a good PM prompt looks like create a simple form with one URL input field, add a button that fetches the web page content, pass that content to AI for summarization and display the summary in a clean format. The difference you can test and fix each step independently. All right, let's solve a real PM problem. Let's generate the structured hypothesis quickly. As a step one, we are gonna build the system prompt. Here is exactly what I'm telling the AI and why each part matters. Role, you are an experienced product manager. This role helps setting the AI's perspective. Defining the task, generate the three testable hypotheses in the if then because format. This helps to keep the output structured and actionable. Then constraint. Keep each hypothesis under 25 words. This makes it concise and shareable. The overall structure of the prompt ensures consistent actionable output and acts as the brain of the tool. Now let's start building this with the lovable. So here is the lovable website and here is where you are going to enter your prompt. And now I'm going to provide my instructions in a plain English, which will be understandable by lovable. So here is it. Create a simple web page with a large text area for the product problems and a button that says generate the hypothesis. When the button is clicked, Take the text from the text area and send it to the open AI API using my system prompt. Display the three hypotheses in a clean list below the button. And this is the system prompt which I am giving, which we have discussed before. You are an experienced product manager. Generate the three testable hypotheses in the if then because format. Keep each hypothesis strictly under 20 words. And then I am clicking on this. So now the lovable will start building the hypothesis tool which we have asked for when you see the prompt over here we are here we have mentioned you have to send my input to the open ai api using my system prompt here we are using open ai to generate the hypothesis i will show you in a while how to connect open ai through an api here you can see the step by step process how it is approaching it is actually generating the files which are required for this application. And we can see the process over here. And here it is expanding what it has done. A clean interface with the large text area for the product problems. Secure OpenAI API key input and generate the hypothesis but button. And beautiful results display showing three structured hypotheses. See. Within just like that, you have your interface. Now let's go for the real test. So to do the real test, what you have to do is go to the platform, open AI, and then enter into this API key structure and create your new secret key and provide a name for this. And create the secret key. Copy this immediately as you are not going to see that later. And you can paste the API key over here. Now this app is ready for testing. And when you wanted to use this API key, ensure that you will load this with a certain amount so that API key will be useful. So the very first scenario. Let's go with the classic example. Our SaaS product has a 30% drop off in the first three days after sign up. Let's see how it will generate the hypothesis. See, it has generated. If we simplify the onboarding process, then user retention will increase in first three days because it reduces the initial user overwhelm. 
if we added a guided product to post sign up then user drop off can decrease because it helps users understand the product better if we offer personalized user support in the first three days then user retention will improve because it addresses user problems promptly now let's look at an another scenario like how it will handle the low feature adaption so i'm giving the input as only 20 percent of users trying our new collaboration feature and here it is if we increase in in-app notifications then user engagement with the collaboration feature will increase because users will be reminded more frequently if we offer a tutorial for the collaboration feature then user engagement will increase because users will better understand its benefits and functionalities and the last one is if we improve the user interface of the collaboration feature then user engagement will increase because the future will be more intuitive and user friendly now let's go with another scenario which is of high support tickets and just like that it has created the hypothesis even for that if we create a detailed setup guide then support tickets will decrease by 20 percent because this can help the users in self-helping if we implement a more intuitive setup process then support tickets will decrease by 30 percent because the processes will be clearer and the last one if we offer a setup tutorial then support tickets will reduce by 40 percent because users will have immediate assistance see we have tried with three different inputs and we have seen that now let's see how this actually works if you go to the code and yeah here if you you can see whatever the exact prompt which we had given before you are an experienced product manager generate three testable hypotheses in the if then because format keep each hypothesis strictly under 20 words the system prompt whatever we had given before will be called through the gpt4 through the api key which we have inserted and with the help of that it is able to provide the results which we are looking for now here let's see for the another thing the real superpower with this wipe coding tools is iteration speed now as a sample let's check this let's change the button color of generate hypothesis to green and just like that within seconds it is able to do this now let's try something more interesting now i want to add a priority labels for each of the hypothesis which will be of the quick wins the short term things and the long term bits I'm again copying my key and let's give the same thing which we had given before. Before this, it is providing the hypothesis like this. Now, after updating the code let's see how it will also provide the priority labels around this now i'm giving the same input but now the output will have the a labels as well with that see it is telling uh, the three-day retention will increase if we add an onboarding tutorial and if you send the personalized reminder emails that will help in prompting to return quick win and if you redesign the initial dashboard then user engagement in the first three days will rise because navigation will be clearer and this will be considered as the long term but and how is it able to do that if we go and check the code see here it has updated that with for each hypothesis also add a priority label either quick win or long term bet format your response as hypothesis text and priority so by just updating the system prompt it was able to show us the result what we are looking for now 
the code updates the app reruns and now each hypothesis has a label next to it and finally let's do this last thing add a drop down of common pm problem templates to it and here it has generated few problem templates common pm problem templates let's consider high card abandonment rate so it will automatically state your product problem as an example and you could generate hypothesis through this so and there we go this would have taken me an hour of research and writing manually we just did it under 10 minutes now that you have seen the ideal path let me save you some pain here are the mistakes that kill 90 percent of the beginner attempts number one overloaded prompts if the ai gets confused your prompt is trying to do too much break it into smaller more specific requests the way how we have done one by one one by one before ai hallucinations to avoid weird or incorrect code be specific Delete the tech stack you want. Use HTML or vanilla JavaScript if at all you are aware of that. Tested APIs. If you are connecting to an API, always verify the endpoint works or not by using a tool like Postman or even just ask the AI to write a test snippet for you. Vague instructions. Be specific about inputs, outputs, and format. The more specific you are, the better the result. As a pro tip, if the AI gets confused, probably has too many requirements. Split it up. And finally, you just watch it if functional PM tool get built within minutes. Now it is your turn. As an immediate action, pick one repetitive task from your PM workflow this week. Time yourself doing it manually. Then try building an AI version of it. Start with simple use cases, a hypothesis generator, a user story formatted, or a meeting note summarizer. The most successful PMs are already using these skills. The question is not whether AI will change the product management. It's whether you will be ready when it does. In the next video, I will show you how to build a user feedback analyzer that automatically categorizes customer requests and connects to tools like Slack or Notion. Hit subscribe if this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.